This is a picture test in practical anatomy of the upper limb. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then you can replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the anatomy of the arm and forearm. Identify the notch A and the structure B. Name the ligament around which it rotates. These are side views of the elbow joint. A is the notch on the proximal end of the ulna that articulates with the trochlea of the humerus. So it is the trochlear notch of the ulna. Note the wrench shape at the proximal end of the ulna, which is formed by the coronoid process anteriorly and the olecranon posteriorly located on either side of the trochlear notch of the ulna. It is clear from the shape of the bones here that this joint is a hinge joint that allows flexion and extension only. B is the disc-shaped head of the radius which articulates with the capitulum, which is the condyle at the lateral side of the distal end of the humerus. In addition to this what we call humero radial articulation, which is part of the elbow joint, the head of the radius forms the proximal or the superior radio ulnar joint between it and the radial notch of the ulna. This proximal radio ulnar joint is a pivot joint permitting rotation of the radius about the ulna in pronation and supination. In the superior radio ulnar joint, the head of the radius is held in position by the U-shaped annular ligament. Identify the muscle A and nerve B. This is a deep dissection of the extensor compartment of the forearm and the proximal part of the radial side is the supinator muscle wrapping around the radius. The muscle has two heads attached to the humerus and ulna and in between the two heads as you can see here the nerve B reaches the posterior compartment of the forearm. It is the posterior interosseous nerve that is the continuation of the deeper branch of the radial nerve. In the cubital fossa, the radial nerve divides into superficial branch, which is cutaneous, and a deeper branch. The deeper branch passes through supinator, supplying it, and reaches the posterior compartment where it is called the posterior interosseous nerve. The posterior interosseous nerve supplies the extensor muscles of the forearm. Now identify the structures A and D. This is an x-ray of the lateral view of the elbow. You can see here A is the coronoid process of the ulna. It lies on one side of the trochlear notch. Posteriorly, D is the olecranon of the ulna. B is the proximal end of the radius. It is the head of the radius. Note that the head of the radius is located proximally while the head of the ulna is not located here. It is located at the distal end of the ulna. So B is the head of the radius. Following the head is the neck and distal to the neck is the tuberosity of the radius. The tuberosity that provides attachment for the tendon of biceps brachii. Which muscle causes abduction of the proximal bone fragment in this x-ray? This is a fracture of the shaft of the humerus. When the shaft fractures, the displacement of the fragments depend on the relation of the site of the fracture to the insertion of the deltoid muscle. Deltoid muscle is attached to the deltoid tuberosity, located on the middle of the lateral border of the humerus. You can see here the soft tissue shadow of the deltoid muscle. When the fracture is distal to deltoid insertion, as in this case, the proximal fragment is abducted by the deltoid. The distal fragment is pulled proximally by biceps and triceps muscles. When the fracture is proximal to deltoid insertion, the proximal fragment is adducted by the muscles of the intertubercular groove and its lips, pectoralis major, teres major, and latissimus dorsi. The distal fragment is pulled upwards and outwards 
upward by deltoid triceps and biceps and coracobrachialis outwards by deltoid because deltoid in, in this case will be attached to the distal fragment not to the proximal fragment. Identify the muscles A and B which nerve passes through muscle B. The structures in question are related to the cubital fossa. This is a triangular space on the anterior surface of the elbow. Its boundaries are formed by two muscles of the forearm that arise above the elbow, namely brachioradialis laterally, which is a bit retracted here, and the other muscle is pronator teres, forming the medial boundary. The two muscles converge together at the apex of the triangle. The base is an imaginary line joining the two epicondyles of the humerus. Note here the prominent medial epicondyle. The floor of the fossa is formed by brachialis muscle, not clearly shown because it is covered by biceps and its tendon. The other muscle that forms the floor of the fossa distally is the supinator muscle. It is clearly seen here, the supinator, because the lateral border, brachioradialis, is retracted, thus revealing more of the floor underneath it. Now, supinator arises by two heads, a humeral head and an ulnar head. A humeral head from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and an ulnar head, which lies deep from the supinator fossa and the crest of the ulna. The muscle wraps around the back of the radius to be inserted into the proximal third of the shaft of the radius. Here, the deeper branch of the radial nerve, which supplies the muscle, leaves the cubital fossa by passing posteriorly between the superficial and deep fibers of the muscle, the two heads of the muscle, to reach the extensor compartment of the forearm where it is called the posterior interosseous nerve. You can see here that the radial nerve located lateral to brachialis muscle between it and the brachioradialis, it divides within the cubital fossa into a superficial and deep branch. The superficial branch is the direct continuation it is the smaller of the two terminal branches and passes under cover of brachioradialis anterior to pronator teres. It's a cutaneous branch and follows the radial artery during part of its course. Again, this is a purely cutaneous branch that supplies the skin of the radial two-third of the dorsum of the hand and the radial three and a half digits proximal to their nail beds. The deep branch and its posterior interosseous nerve are purely motor branches and they supply the muscles of the extensor compartment of the forearm. Identify the nerve A and map the area of skin supplied by it in the hand. The nerve A leaves the flexor compartment of the arm to reach the extensor compartment of the arm just proximal to the elbow, where it passes behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus. This is the ulnar nerve, which after passing behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus, it enters the flexor compartment of the forearm. In the forearm, the ulnar nerve supplies a dorsal cutaneous branch that supplies cutaneous innervation to the medial side over the dorsum of the hand, and medial one and a half digits. Close to the flexor retinaculum, the ulnar nerve supplies a palmar cutaneous branch, which supplies the skin over the hypothenar eminence on the medial side of the palm. In the palm, the ulnar nerve divides into superficial and deep branches. The superficial branch supplies cutaneous branches to the palmar surface of the ulnar one and a half digits as well as the region of the nail beds. Thus the ulnar nerve as a whole supplies the palmar and dorsal aspect of the medial third of the hand and the medial one and a half digits. 
identify the fossa A, which bone occupies the fossa during extension of the elbow. This is a posterior view of the distal end of the humerus, showing the trochlea that articulates with the trochlear notch of the ulna. Above the trochlea, the fossa lodges the olecranon of the ulna during extension of the elbow. B is the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. It is less prominent than the medial epicondyle and provides the attachment for the common extensor origin for the superficial muscles of the extensor compartment of the forearm. Tennis elbow results from inflammation of the tendon of the common extensor origin at the lateral epicondyle. Any forced extension results in pain localized at the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. It has earned the name because of the common occurrence of this condition in tennis players because of continuous extension of the wrist. However, it can occur in any other person. Identify the nerve A and the muscle B. This is a lateral view of the distal arm. Note the biceps muscle with the bicipital aponeurosis. Deep to it is brachialis. In the extensor compartment, this is triceps muscle. Muscle B is attached to the upper part of the lateral supracondylar ridge, and it is the brachioradialis muscle. Nerve A is located between brachialis and brachioradialis. It is the radial nerve. The radial nerve spirals around the shaft of the humerus, downwards and laterally, in the spiral groove of the humerus, in the extensor compartment. At the distal third of the arm, it leaves the extensor compartment by piercing the lateral intermuscular septum and gain the flexor compartment, lateral to brachialis and medial to two muscles of the forearm, brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus, supplying these two muscles. Which artery is felt in this patient and which muscle tendon is located just lateral to the artery? It is the pulsations of the brachial artery that is felt in this patient. In the cubital fossa, the brachial artery lies just medial to biceps tendon. This is the same place where the stethoscope is placed over the artery when measuring arterial blood pressure, whereby a sphygmomanometer cuff is placed around the arm and inflated until it compresses or occludes the brachial artery against the humerus. As the pressure of the cuff is reduced, blood begins to pass through the artery, through the brachial artery, and the first audible sound where the stethoscope is placed indicates the systolic blood pressure. Identify the muscle A, what is its nerve supply, and to which group of forearm muscles it belongs. This dissection shows the superficial group of extensor muscles of the forearm, which arise from the common extensor origin on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Muscle A is a small, triangular muscle behind the elbow joint. It is partially blended with triceps, as you can see here. It arises from the posterior surface of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, the common extensor origin, and its fibers diverge medially towards the ulna to be attached to the lateral aspect of the olecranon. It is the unconious muscle. It belongs to the superficial group of extensor muscles of the forearm. The muscle is supplied by the radial nerve through the branch to the medial head of triceps. This branch is given to the medial head as the radial nerve passes in the spiral groove and then continues within the medial head to reach unconious muscle. The muscle is unimportant functionally and its major function is not clear. It is thought to assist the triceps in extending the elbow joint. It may also tense the capsule of the elbow joint, preventing its being pinched during extension of the elbow. 